For the installation of the Epson SureLab D3000 printer PC, several items are required. Based on experience, these can be carried in, or in many cases simply borrowed from the installation site, if prearranged. Once the installation is completed, these items are no longer required for the routine operation of the SureLab D3000. As the printer PC does not include an optical drive, a USB thumb drive or external drive needs to be prepared to install the software from. A specific folder from the SureLab software DVD needs to be copied to it. To configure the printer PC, you need to attach a USB keyboard and mouse along with a VGA monitor and cable. Three tasks need to be completed on the printer PC prior to installing the SureLab software. First, from the control panel programs and features, remove the ghost console client application. This application will continually seek for a non-present Epson PC if not removed. This was used to ghost the printer PC custom disk build during manufacturing. Epson America pre-configured and optimized the majority of required settings for the printer PC up front. Examples of this are covered in the next slide. The second item is to set the date and time. This information is used by SureLab's dot matrix backprint function if the date and time are chosen to be imprinted. Third, assign a static IP version 4 network address. This is a critical requirement. The SureLab software for the printer PC will not configure properly if the network setting is on DHCP. It is best to ask the installation site client to assign you the IP address to use. And this is best done ahead of time as many studios use external IT consultants for their networking needs. Examples of configuration changes. We set user acceptance control or UAC to off. This is a requirement on both printer and client PCs. Network adapter settings established in BIOS and software for Wake on LAN. Unnecessary application in Windows services are removed or disabled to reduce overhead and optimize the printer PC for its task of keeping SureLab at full speed and automatic fault recovery. Standardized names are put in place. The PC network name of slprinter-pc and username of slprinter. This assists in both remote access and Epson technical support. If there will be more than one SureLab installed on the network, the additional printer PCs will need to be given adjusted network names perhaps slprinter-pc1, 2, etc. Use the date and time control panel to make the appropriate settings for your time zone. Navigating to the network adapter to set IP address can be done in many ways. In the example to be shown, I am simply transferring the DHCP assigned address to the static state. The printer PC does not need to have DNS settings for access to the internet but they can be helpful in the event of a SureLab software update and downloading it from the web. Getting the IP address done correctly saves time on the back end, since if the IP address of the printer PC needs to be changed, all client PCs will need to have their printer driver reconfigured. Once these three steps are completed, removing the ghost client, setting the time and date, and entering the static IP address, Reboot the PC and log back in. It's now time to plug in the USB cable between any USB backside port on the printer PC to SureLab. If you're already familiar with installing Epson printers and most USB devices, this is completely backwards to everything you have been taught. Normally, install software, then plug in the printer when prompted. At this stage, you should notice a Windows prompt that the device driver software was not successfully installed. This is expected and OK. If you monitor the printer and devices window, an Epson Epson SLD3000 series generic icon will appear. The printer PC is now ready for software installation. Plug in the USB drive, navigate to the system application folder, and double click on install.exe. Follow along the wizard. At the Select PC, you must choose the Printer PC. This is important as Epson America has included a Printer PC with each SureLab. We do not require nor support the bottom choice of configuration without the Printer PC. Please do not use it during any installation process. 
There is only one drive to install on, so simply click Next on the Select Work Drive screen and the software install will begin. A red Windows dialog will appear when the process gets to install the driver software. Select the bottom choice to install the driver software anyway. This dialog will always appear as the print monitor being installed is not a true Windows driver and can't be WICL or Windows Hardware Quality Labs certified. A dialog that the Epson printer utility setup, printer driver, and port configuration completed successfully should appear. Click OK. Next to appear will be the firmware update window. This should take between 5 and 6 minutes to complete. If it flashes by quickly, then it is likely at the driver installation step, the choice was not made to install the driver, or it is normal if the software install is at the same rev as the existing firmware, during reinstallation for example. At the end of the firmware update, restart and log back into the printer PC. A quick check of devices and printers should reveal a green checked print monitor for the SLD3000. There is one last step, the fourth to complete, and that is to set the SureLab D3000 to use the media developed for Epson for North America. Navigate to the Paper Tool folder and double click on the EML papertool.exe. At the password prompt, enter the service code used in the maintenance utility. At the Select Paper Settings pull-down menu, select Local Paper 1. This will remove the third setting for matte paper, which is not included or supported in North America by choice, and configure the system for accurate use of the glossy and luster North American media. Once setup is complete, press Close and reboot the PC. If you skip this step, you will know once you install the client PC software, as you will see a selection for matte media and the media types for glossy and luster will be in parentheses. To correct this, you will need to go back to the printer PC and follow the paper setting procedure above, then remove and reinstall the client PC driver. Before proceeding to the client PC setup, several quick checks can confirm that things should go smoothly. First, check the task manager to ensure that the four required Epson services are running. Second, check the EML printer info.ini for the presence of the MAC address of the Ethernet card and the IP address assigned earlier. Yours will be different from what is shown on screen. For network text, the MAC address is shown in the decimal equivalent of the normal two digit hex code. The serial number is blank at this stage and will be populated once a client PC is connected and SureLab's pre-operation check is complete. If you cannot confirm the settings in the last two steps, remove the Epson software from the printer PC and start the process over. Do not move on to installing the client PC software.